everyone, it's Kim and welcome back to my channel. So we're in a different section of my library slash office. Usually I'm on the other corner where my TBR is, but these are my red books because we're starting here today with this video because we are going to be unhauling some books and I decided to bring you with me and I'm going to talk through what I'm unhauling, why I'm unhauling them, mostly because I just need some room. I am running out of room on these shelves. There are like piles of books just stacked in front of the other books and I need to reorganize and that means getting rid of some books. So I'm bringing you on this journey with me. I feel like I can do this because I'm like hyped. I like got dressed up like Marie Kondo suggests to declutter. I, I have my like badass girl boss hoop earrings on from Uncommon James. I am ready. I got my coffee. I got a candle going. This is gonna go well, I think. Like, I'm actually jazzed to get rid of books, which is a terrifying concept. But here we are. So, I'm gonna get going with perusing. I have a pile already that I'll share with you. Um, I'm getting rid of one full series and a few other small ones, and then we will get started with pulling books off of these shelves to declutter and unhaul and donate and sell and all of the above. And also for any books that pop up that I may be unhauling that are your favorite, I'm sorry, it's nothing personal. I just either didn't enjoy them as much as I thought, or I enjoyed them but I'm not gonna reread them, like they weren't like that. I want to keep this to reread and enjoy later on. That's really it. I just need some space and those are kind of my, my criteria for how I'm unhauling books. As for a goal, I already have like a pile of about 15 books because I'm getting rid of a full series, right? So I don't know, maybe like 60 books off of these. That may be too little. I don't know. We'll see as I go. I'll keep a little tally up here on which book numbers we're on and let's see how high we can get. Okay, all right, so the stack of books is currently off camera, sort of, you can kind of see it peeking through, but here are 10 books I will be getting rid of and that is the entire House of Night series. I just, like, I enjoyed this series when I read it, but some of them were just too much of a filler book for me that it kind of just, felt like the series dragged on, and though I did enjoy how it ended, I'm not going to reread this series, so I would rather these go to a new reader, a new YA reader, or I don't know, someone else that I know will enjoy them a lot more than I am just having them on my shelf. So these books are going. All right, four other books that I'm planning on donating is The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. As much as this little guy is really cute, I, and the story's alright. It's not, I just, I don't know. I've seen the movie, I've read this book. I don't know if the story of the time machine just isn't for me, or maybe it's just not entertaining enough for me. I don't know, but this, this, it's super cute, but like, I need the room no matter how much, so this one's getting donated, or unhauled. Next up is the copy of Rumblefish by S.E. Hinton. I just didn't like this one. I feel like I just love The Outsiders book and movie so much that anything else I read just doesn't live up to it. This is a signed copy, so I know some young reader will be happy to find this. Next is a paperback copy of The Hunger Games. I got given this at a book festival, I believe it was Y'all Fest, I think last year, not last year, of course not last year, 2019, and I have the, I have the series in hardback, I don't need a paperback copy, so Hunger Games is being unhauled. And the final one that I kind of pre-picked out is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I just read this last month, it was our book club pick. But it definitely is more of like, this is something I would have for sure probably read in a sociology class in college. And it's something that you just, you need to read once. And if you're not going to use it for, not necessarily educational purpose, but like, 
I don't know, it's just not one of those books that you're gonna reread again unless you absolutely have to, like if you're gonna write a paper or something, if that makes sense. I took what I needed from it, I learned, I... Th there was a lot to digest about this book, and I do suggest reading it. I definitely do suggest reading it. Check trigger warnings beforehand. It's, it's very dark, but I think it's a very important read. But I do not want to read it again, so I'm going to pass it along into the world for someone else. So now comes the hard part. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Let's see. Let's, oh gosh, I'm so nervous. How many, okay, how many did I unhaul? One, two, three, four. Fourteen. Fourteen so far. So, I said sixty at the beginning in the intro, so I almost have fifteen. So it's like a quarter of the way there, so let's do that. Let's aim for 60. We're aiming for 60. So I need 45 more, is that right? I don't do math well in my head. All right, 45 more, or 46 technically, because we have 14. Okay, all right. I'm also going to be unhauling Dream a Little Dream by Giovanna Fletcher. I love her stories and I love her writing, but this was not my favorite. I like her other ones more, so I'm not gonna reread this one at all. So I'm gonna give it away. And I'm also gonna add in the Dream a Little Christmas Dream, the little novella that comes along with it. So these two are on the shelf. Some of the ones over here are like um, nostalgic ones that were given to me by my mom because there's something we share, so those are definitely staying. Um, let's see. Okay, this one can come out. This one can go. The Space Between by Brianna Yovanov. Yo um, I read it, it was good. But I don't, I, I would like to read her other book, The Replacement. I think that one would be more my jam. So the, I just, I, I liked it when I read it, but I'm not going to reread it. So this one's going, but like this cover is gorgeous. And that's what pulled me in in the first place. Just, just look at it. So if you like pretty covers, I highly suggest this one. But the story was all right. It was interesting, but I don't need to read it again. Okay, Scott Westerfeld, Afterworlds. I liked this book. I really enjoyed how it was like two different stories, but I keep saying that I'm going to go back and read it one story at a time, so like all the white header chapters and then the black header chapters, and I never do. So if I ever feel the need to read it again, I will probably just buy a paperback copy or just listen to it or something else. But I have not picked this book up since I first read it, and that was when it came out, which was 2014. So seven years, I don't think I'm going to read this again. So it's a pretty big book, so it's going to give me a little, quite a bit of space on my bookshelf. So it's got to go. All right, another one that's got to, that is going is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. I remember really enjoying this book when I read it, but I just, I don't know, I'm not interested anymore in reading the rest, and a few of her other books have fallen flat for me, so I'm just going to pass this on to someone else or a collector of the Outcrate editions because this is the Outcrate exclusive. So yeah, this one is being unhauled. Okay, another trilogy that I'm, this one's a possible. I'm putting it in the maybe pile because I think I want to reread Generation Dead first to see if I still enjoy it. If I still enjoy it, I may keep it. I'm tempted to just keep the first two as those two are a full story, whereas Passing Strange is like an additional kind of story in the same world, even though it is the trilogy. But that would be like a really a-hole move, I feel, like to keep one and two and give away three. <laughs> but we'll see. This is a maybe. This is going in the maybe pile to possibly reread and then decide.
but for now it is getting off my shelf. Oh, what's next? Okay, I'm gonna pull this one. Yeah. Okay, so a couple arcs. One is Cadavering Queen by Alyssa Quitney, and the other is Blood Countess by Lana Pop Popovich. Um, these were both good, they were entertaining, I'm just not going to reread them, so I'd rather do maybe like a giveaway or something, or I'll just put them in little free libraries. So, these two. Alright, we are at 20 books right now. This is hard, okay? I don't know how people do this. Alright, found another one. I'm gonna be getting rid of The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This is the like special penguin edition. Um, it was a good book, I enjoyed it, but I haven't watched the show, but I f almost feel like I'd rather watch the show than read the book again, just because, I, I don't know, it was alright, it freaked me out a little bit, it was, it was scary, it's a horror book, but I have no desire to read it again, so I will be unhauling this one. Alright, um, Very Good Lives, The Fringe Benefits, A Failure in the Importance of Imagination by J.K. Rowling. This is just a... Um, it's a printed format of her commencement speech at Harvard. If I want to read it again anytime down the line, I can just look at it online. I don't need an actual, like, copy of it, so this one's going. books that I'm unhauling. Um, one is Soundless by Rochelle Mead. I, I do love the Vampire Academy series and Bloodlines, but Soundless just has some issues with it and it kind of just like the plot was interesting but not interesting enough that I would want to reread it again. So yep, going to be unhauling this one. Next I have two arcs. One is Time Bomb and the other is Izzy and Tristan. For Time Bomb, this book was absolutely mental. I I didn't even figure out the twist until the twist happened. So I highly recommend this book. I may down the line get a finished copy, possibly, I don't know. But I would rather someone else read the arc and enjoy it. And I'm gonna go ahead and unhaul this one. I'm also gonna unhaul Izzy and Tristan. I enjoyed this story. I enjoyed the retelling of Izzy, of Tristan and Isolde, but I didn't really see myself in any of the characters and especially in a contemporary I feel like for me that is pretty important no matter like even if it's the smallest little thing just something that connects me in some way to the characters and I did not really get that in this story and while I did love this book I'm not gonna reread it so I'm gonna pass it on. Another book that can go is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. This book was something. This book was wild and weird and just I don't want to read it again. Like, I don't know. It was it was interesting. That's all I have to say, but it it's going cuz I know. Just did not enjoy it. It was a weird one. It's being unhauled.
Next is The Happiness Index by Gretchen Rubin. This, I actually was reading this when I started my bookstagram channel, but I definitely don't need to read it again. I don't want to read it again. Um, it's about her journey in where she spent a year having more fun and living a happy life and what she needed to change or add or take away to do that. And it's really interesting and really intriguing of bringing happiness into your life, but I read it once and I don't think I need to read it again, so I will be unhauling this one. Next is Witch Season, Summer and Fall by Jeff Marriott. Marriott? Marriott? Um, I don't really think I have a reason for unhauling this, just I don't remember what it was about and I don't really... I don't necessarily feel the need to reread it. Um, I think I read it back in like middle school or high school, like early high school. So I just don't feel the need to read it. And I, I'm guessing I never finished the series, so I'm just gonna unhaul this one. Along with those, I'm also going, now there's a reason I'm unhauling these two, and this is Sense and Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. Okay, reason I'm unhauling these, I'm unhauling Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. These are the Barnes & Noble Classic Editions. Um, I do want to start collecting the Canterbury Cloud, Word Cloud versions of classics, so I don't need these on my shelves and I will be repurchasing in the other format. So these are going to go and be donated. I'm not going to lie, this is actually easier than I originally thought it was going to be. So, I think I'm around 30 books now, so I'm like halfway to 60, which I'm starting to see some space, but I need, I need more space. There is not enough space on these shelves. So, I'm going to get to 60 and then see where we are, but we may have to up our goal for the reading already read side, and then we're going to get to the TBR side because that needs a lot of help, and I'm hoping to dwindle that down a lot so or at least put some on like a read to then unhaul kind of situation so let's get back to unhauling some books can we do 30 more i think we can all right so next up is the Spiderwick Chronicles. I read these in quick succession to help me hit my reading goal and they were very cute, very fun, but I'm not going to read them again. Um, so yeah, these can move on and hopefully get into um, a new reader's hands or a child that's just finding middle grade and can help them grow their little libraries or their reading. So. I'm going to be unhauling this one. Next is another five book series. Um, this is probably the, the one of the older series I have on my shelves and that is a Christian book series called Diary of a Teenage Girl and these are the Caitlin books. Um, I loved these books when I was in like a freshman, eighth grade freshman. Um, I don't know, at the time they just proved really helpful for me but I definitely don't need them anymore. Um, they were enjoyable, but I'm not going to reread them. I just am kind of holding on to them for sentimental value. And I feel like that's part of decluttering is moving on and letting someone else find these books and seeing if they help them in their life in some way. So this series will be leaving. I may take a picture of it just for sentimental reasons, but I did enjoy these when I was a kid. So. There's this series. Alright, so these two right here, we have Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon, and we have Trinkets by Kirsten Smith. I enjoyed reading both of these books, but they, there was just something that wasn't there for me um, that I'm not going to read them again. So I did enjoy them while I, when I read them. They were fun. This one had a twist I wasn't expecting, but I expected a bit more out of both of them. So these two are being unhauled. Another one that is being unhauled is the Song of Achilles. Yes, I know, I'm unhauling the Song of Achilles. I enjoyed this book, I really truly did, but Circe was way more for me. Um, while I enjoyed the new storytelling of 
of the story of Achilles where it's from his lover's perspective, that was really interesting and in, and just definitely was a different way of telling the story, but it was still the story of Achilles and there wasn't quite enough difference. It also could have been that Cersei it has magic in it and I love fantasy, I love magic. And maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it as much. I don't know. It was still a good read. Highly recommend reading it, but it just wasn't one that I'm going to reread or come back to. So it's going to be heading to a new home. I really never thought I'd get rid of book box books, but another one that I'm going to go ahead and get rid of is Four Dead Queens. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, I did enjoy Four Dead Queens, but it did just like lack a little something for me in the way of world building. I wish we would have gotten to spend more time in the world, but I'm probably not going to reread this and if I do I will probably listen to it on audio or I'll just get it from the library or something if I do have the need to reread it. So Four Dead Queens, also the Alcrate exclusive edition. Alright, a little coffee break chit chat. I think I'm getting close. I feel like I'm maybe at like I had the two five counts, so that would have been like 40. So I'm thinking if we're getting close to 50 books so far, so we're almost to our goal. But I'm getting to the point where the ones that are left over that I'm questioning, I think I'm questioning because I need to reread it to see, because I feel like some of them were just such a long time ago that I just don't remember. If I, I that sounds so weird to say I don't remember if I loved it enough to reread it. But I feel like as readers you'll understand what I'm saying. Like sometimes we just, there's been so many books in our lives that we just can't remember the specific plot to one. Okay, one that I'm questioning. Okay, I really, really enjoyed this book. It's 172 Hours on the Moon by Johan Harstad. It was so good and so thrilling. Like it was crazy. I just don't know if I'm going to reread it, but I really, really liked it. So it's like, do I reread it? Do I put it in a reread pile and then get rid of it? Or do I just keep it? I don't know. That's one that I'm questioning. I'm also questioning Balefire by Kate Tiernan just because I know I really enjoyed this one. But am I going to reread it? Possibly. Another one I'm questioning is Dark Visions by L.J. Smith. He wrote the Vampire Diaries books. Honestly, I don't like the books. I like the TV show more, but this series was really good and it's just a bind up. But did I like it enough to keep it and reread it? Because it's a fairly chunky book because it involves three books and it's taking up space. Those are my questions right now. And I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How about this one stays and Dark Vision goes? How about that? Okay, Dark Vision is going. This one's gone. I have no other reason besides I kind of remember what it's about. So you know what? It's gone. It's gone. I have to start being really aggressive because now I'm running out of... I'm running out of steam here on what I need to get rid of. So it's gone. It's gone. Alright, so that was a little dramatic. Even for me. So we're going to take a moment. We're going to breathe. We're going to get back. We're going to get back to it. Okay, so I have two copies of Macbeth. One is the Alchemy and Ink special little edition that she included in one of her candle boxes. Um, this is the one I'll be getting rid of. I actually really enjoy these like painted watercolor versions of the Folger Shakespeare Library. Um, at uh, you can find them at like Barnes and Noble and stuff. So I'm gonna be keeping this one, but getting rid of this version of it. The next book that is on the chopping block is Gillian Flynn Dark Places. This book was another book club pick for my friends and I. It was good, it was creepy, it was intense, the movie was interesting. Um, I enjoyed it for what the movie was. But I'm most likely not going to read it again. So um, there are other thrillers that I enjoy a lot more so I'm going to be handing this to someone else. Alright so these two um, 
I just don't have any use for children's Bibles anymore and I don't have children so I'm going to be getting rid of these two. One is the Kids Life Application Bible and one is the Youth Bible. I'm going to do a head count on the books and see how many more to reach 60 books that I need to get rid of because I'm starting to have some trouble so let's see where we're at. Alright, quick coffee break and an update. We have 50 books unhauled so far so with the goal of 60 in mind for the red books that means we have 10 more. We're kind of starting to cut it down to the wire on what I want to take off these shelves. I have a few ideas but I may do like a video where I like reread series from my childhood or from my like school years and then maybe donate them or get rid of them because I kind of want to reread them for that nostalgia. Alright, this one kind of hurts me because I remember being super excited. I tried to get an arc at Y'all Fest for it and then I eventually bought the hardcover of the Hummingbird Dagger when it came out and while I enjoyed reading it, it just kind of like didn't wow me like I thought it was going to which makes me really makes me really sad but it just didn't and so maybe someone else will enjoy it more than I did so I'm gonna be unhauling the hummingbird dagger by Cindy Anstey. Anstey? Anstey? This one. This makes me really sad actually that I didn't enjoy this one as much as I thought but gotta go. <laughs> Okay, so we have six paranormal romance books that I read a long, long time ago. So we have Twilight Hunger by Maggie Shane, Dark Thirst by Sarah Renke, After Sundown by Amanda Ashley, Bite Me If You Can, and The Accidental Vampire by Lindsay Sands, and Famed and Fabulous by Michelle Rowan. Um, I did keep some of my paranormal romance, the ones that I recall really enjoying and that were really funny and entertaining, but these six are going to be leaving me. We're at 57, so we have three more left. We're doing this. We're doing this. Okay. Uh, three more left, three more left. Alright, so number 58, Stephen King's Doctor Sleep. Um, I read The Shining, then I read this one. I actually wanted to read this one first, but I didn't realize it was a sequel because I'd never read The Shining. So I read both of them. I unhauled The Shining quite a long time ago and I finally read this one and now it's time to unhaul it because while I enjoyed it, it was interesting. I have no desire to read it again. The cover on the other hand is absolutely phenomenal and I do want to watch the movie for this one. Will not watch the movie for The Shining because I know it's going to freak me out. The most of that movie I want to see is what's shown to me in Ready Player One. <laughs> so Dr. Sleep is leaving the building. Number 59 is Girl Online by Zoe Sugg. Um, at the time of reading this, uh, there was definitely pieces of it that I related to, like the anxiety and the kind of panic attacks that the main character has. Definitely felt that on a level. Um, and it was a good book. There's obviously been a little drama surrounding this book, of course, but overall the story was good. It was an interesting coming of age where you're de dealing with mental illness and things like that on kind of a pretty basic level. So for what it is, it was a good read, but I'm not going to read it again and I'm not going to continue the series, so there's no point in keeping this book around. Alright, we have reached the 60th book and that is Reshaping It All by Candace Cameron Bure. This is basically her journey and her story about physical and spiritual fitness and the motivation with foods and working out and things like that. It was interesting. Most of it is just basic fitness advice with a little spiritual twist. But I read it once and I don't think I'll need to read it again, so I will be unhauling this one. Okay, so we hit 60, but I think I'm going to make it 70, but there's a caveat to this next group of books, and that is the Twitches or Tea Witches series, all 10 books. 
um, by H.B. Gilmore and Randy Reisfeld. These um, became a Disney Channel original movie with Tia and, Tamari, Tia and Tamara Mowry. And I actually, I did not like the movies, but I did like the series when I was younger. So I think what I'm going to do is a, like, rereading books from my school years or rereading books from my teen years kind of like series because I have a few different ones of these but I definitely want to reread them just just because and maybe I'll do that for a video and then I will unhaul these so you know what here is 10 more that are going so a total of 70 books off of my red shelves I did hold these up earlier but I probably won't include the footage because then I decided to keep them but now I'm deciding to go ahead and unhaul them and that is Generation Dead series by Daniel Waters I really enjoyed the series when it came out and I think I at the time I thought I was gonna reread them but it's been over 11 years since the final book came out and I have had no like let me pick that book up again um so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of them I think the covers are pretty fun but overall I just have no desire to read them I'm not a like I'm not that big of a zombie book person so I'm probably not gonna ever reread them again it's been 11 years time for them to find a new home. Okay, so with those three, we have 73 books. So my thought process is I'm going to find two more, big books, small books, whatever, what have you, and that will make a solid 75 books off of my already read shelves. And then we will switch over to the TBR shelves and see how we can do on that side, which I think will be a lot more difficult because I have no, I'm going to have to read backs of books and like see how I feel and I think those will be a bit more complicated. So let's finish up the already read books. All right, found two. I'm gonna go ahead, We I mentioned it earlier, but once again, I don't know if the footage is gonna be in it, but I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of No Fear Shakespeare for Romeo and Juliet. Um, there's another brand of like Shakespeare books in coll a collection that I enjoy the covers of. So I think I'm gonna like repurchase this, but in that version. And then the other thing I'm going to get rid of is a manga entitled The Devil Within. I don't remember reading this. I'm assuming I read it. Don't know if I liked it, but I never bought any more of the series. So I'm just going to go ahead and unhaul it because I don't think I'm going to. So there you go. Books 74 and 75 are done. So we are finished with the already read side of my bookshelves. So let's get going on to the TBR. All right. I have switched over to the TBR side of my bookshelves. I've eaten some lunch, I have another cup of coffee, so I'm ready, I think, as ready as I'm going to be to tackle the TBR books now. I'm trying to decide on my goal, like, I still want to read a good, good chunk of these, but I know that there are some that I'm probably just not, either not inspired about anymore, or in, in, inspired about, no, that... There's some that I just like probably I'm not interested in as much or there's some that I'm interested in but I don't know if I'll be interested enough to keep them afterwards. So I guess all I can do is get started. I don't really have a goal. I'm thinking maybe just 25 to start. That would make like an even 100 books that I'm getting rid of. So maybe we'll start with 25. So TBR books, 25 of them sounds like a plan so let's let's find them okay so book number one off of the TBR is going to be The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith or JK Rowling I just I bought this when it first came out and I haven't even touched it so I obviously didn't care enough then and I don't really care enough now to read it so it's it's gonna leave the TBR that's all there is to that one. The next one I'm going to be getting rid of is New World Rising by Jennifer Wilson. I believe this was a bonus book in an Owlcrate box pretty close to when the box started. Um, it's dystopian and I just feel like while I still like dystopian, I feel like I have my favorites already and I'm not necessarily looking for new ones. I almost would rather reread Divergent or reread Hunger Games or some other ones. I just don't think I'm going to pick it up anytime soon, so this one will be leaving my TBR as well. Book number three that I'm going to be getting rid this is, okay, so trying to pick these books out is really difficult because <laughs> then I'm looking, I'm like, oh yeah, there's this book and this book. 
but I'm it's gonna be tough to get to 25 it might be tough to get to the next one but I'm gonna try my best and the third book that I'm getting rid of is Rainbow Rowell's Land Landline and the reason I'm getting rid of this one like while it sounds interesting this is an ARC copy of this book. This is the first book I want off of Goodreads. And I want it back in 2014. And I still haven't read it. So I don't know what that says that I just either wasn't interested in reading it at the time and then like forgot about it and then kept finding it again. But I still never read it. And I don't know if I will. I don't know. It just... It doesn't sound interesting to me right now. So... I'm gonna hand this off to someone who might enjoy it a bit more than I do. Okay, so book number four that I'm going to be giving away is Alice I Have Been by Melanie Benjamin. This is kind of like a mixture of fact and fiction about Alice, who of course is the real daughter of the author of Alice in Wonderland, and he wrote them for her, and this is like talking about her compared to her like fictional heroine. So I don't know. I, I like Alice in Wonderland, like, but I don't like love it, so it's like while this sounds interesting, I'm not probably going to pick it up anytime soon, and even if I did, I probably would unhaul it afterwards because it's just not something that I care too much about or would want on my TBR shelf. I don't know, it just doesn't sound like something I'll enjoy as much as somebody else. So, once again, mentioning Alice in Wonderland in a way, but more about the Red Queen, um, but also just in general. I have Heartless by Marissa Meyer and Renegades by Marissa Meyer. Now these two are kind of on the fence. Uh, let me know in the comments your opinions on these two. I was not a fan of the Lunar Chronicles. I read the first one and had no desire to read anything past Cinder. So tell me what your opinion on these two are. Like these sound more interesting to me. I just I just don't know if maybe it's her writing style but I feel like maybe I need to give one of her other series a chance so these are like a maybe but we're gonna count them on the list so this is five and six this one is also going on my maybe list I think the maybes might make it onto a shelf where I put a prompt for my TBR game and I have to read one and then I can decide if I want to keep it or not and that is Bass in the Night by Sarah Porter I feel like I have like this odd relationship with fairy tale retellings. It's just like, I don't know. I either really like them and I'm in the mood for them or I just don't care. And I feel like that's why I'm just so iffy and on the fence about this one is because it is a retelling. But it sounds good. I just, I don't know. Yeah, so this one's going on the maybe pile. I feel like there will be a lot of maybes and then that will be its own over time. I don't know, but this one's going on it. Alright, so there has been a change in the plan. So uh, I just contemplated this for like 10 minutes and Instagrammed about it, but I cannot, I can't do the TBR side. I have tried, I have looked, I have scoured, I have picked up books and read them and I just cannot seem to solidly say I want to get rid of this book. So my plan is to come up with either TBR game prompts or another way to go through the books that I'm either not quite as excited about but I still want to read and then the ones I'm super excited about that I definitely know I'll keep afterwards or hope to keep afterwards. I don't know I think it was easier with the red side because I already read them I know what I thought about them it was easier. So that is now the new plan I will come up with another method of madness for the TBR books. So for now, I hope you enjoyed this unhaul. Thanks for, thanks for uh, hanging out with me. I'm sure this video might be kind of long. So yeah, if you made it this far, drop a coffee emoji down in the comments. And let me know if there's any of these books that you would have kept. Yeah, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you would have kept or maybe what you also would have given away. So. 
that is all for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon with a brand new video. Happy reading and take care everyone. Bye.